Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Hengdal Chita. So I'm going to uh, go back a little bit in history. Uh, for those of you that don't know this, did before he picked up the robe and the bowl, uh, really got into music for a while. He was he was really kind of fanatical about it. And um, he was particularly infatuated with jazz. And you, you might not believe this, but Sid's a little OCD. And so, you know, when he, when he gets into something, he, he really gets into it. And so being, being a jazz musician was his life plan. That was his goal. Um, and he was just, he was totally fixated. And so, you know, he did everything he could to, to learn about music and, and jazz especially, um, listen to, to old records because he was just fascinated with, you know, the, the recordings and what was done. He went to the local record store and he bought a case of discs. He, everybody here tonight remembers what a real record is, I'm thinking. Um, bought a case of discs and just went home and put them on the turntable and just played them one after another and just, just fascinated with what was going on, again, especially jazz. And so as he listened to jazz and all these different records and all these artists, he found himself gravitating towards Miles Davis. And he decided that's it. That's it. That's the path, man. That's, that's me. That's where I'm going. What Miles does with that horn is just, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like that freedom and that expression. I need to do this. And so he, he got all the materials he could, you know, more, more stuff on theory. And he went out and he, you know, he did some research and he bought himself a nice horn and he, you know, polished it up and he oiled the, 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 fingerings you know the the plungers and and he just sat with his horn with a stack of records days weeks months just just listening and and following along the sounds and the riffs and and everything that miles was doing with that horn and what his band was doing and the way they they all just played together even though they were doing an improv and he he memorized every sound every nuance every bit of timing and, and he just, he'd found his niche in life, you know? So he, he, he got to where he felt really confident about all of this. And, and he started looking around on bulletin boards. And again, you all are my vintage pretty much. So you remember like the bulletin board, you know, in the coffee shop with a little piece of paper and like some things you could tear off, you know, and found a, found a band looking for a horn player to jam with him in the back of a club and, you know, tore off the little stub. You know, before Craigslist, I mean, we're going, we're going back here into real, real music, you know, back rooms in a coffee house. And so he found this band and he got a hold of them and he arranged, you know, to, to get up on stage and do a jam with them. And he was so excited, you know, he got the clothes together, the wingtips and, and, you know, met the guys there and they talked and they had some drinks and, and just, you know, the tension was really building. It was going to be great. There's people gathering around and, you know, they get up on stage and he's, he's, he's a little nervous, but, you know, he's got his horn and he can feel the, the way the plungers are moving and, and he's okay. It's okay. And he sees the, the light glinting on the horn and he's going back through all that theory and everything in his mind. And well, they start, you know, and the drummer comes in he's got the brushes going, you know, real sly and, you know, bass player slaps out a couple of bars and then the piano player, you know, Little, little riff going on and they look and they nod at Sid and it's it's his moment in the light and he brings up that horn and <laughs> it, it seems you know he he never actually learned to play the trumpet it was the, it was the one flaw in in the plan here and you know the the other guys i mean they were pros so they they realized it was an issue and they just went into something else and kept playing and sid kind of you know slunk down off the stage and wandered off to sit in the back of the room and and you know listen to the band so i've been thinking a lot about 
where we've been going and we've talked about the precepts and we've talked about, you know, some of the basics and why we meditate and what we're doing here. And we talk about subjective and ultimate truth and constant reality and is it real is it your mind or the flag in your mind or the flag in the wind or the wind in your mind and is the precept there to keep it or to maybe break it and skillful means and and we have all this this fancy theory that we love to get into but sometimes we don't learn to play the instrument first we go out and we buy the books and we're fascinated by the characters. And when Sean talked a while ago, I think about Ikkyu and, and some of our, our famous iconoclasts. If you're anybody like me, you know, you, you love the guy that just walks up into the middle of the temple and knocks the Buddha off the altar. You go, yeah. But you got to learn to play the instrument first. And so we have these great little things that develop us into musicians. The Buddha, his first sermon, the first sutra starts off with the middle path. No extremes, not self-indulgence, not self-immolation, middle path. And then it goes on to the eightfold path and that's, you know, that's our scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So let's do it. So we've got an instruction and we've got a scale. And we go on in, in the early teachings. Well, what do we do? Well, we, we concentrate on the breath. We focus on the breath. We tune our instrument. You know, and if you like, okay, heart, mind, chita, that's, that's our instrument. And we can decide if that's the horn or the drum or sax or what, you know, whatever our trip is. But we learn to play the instrument. And then hopefully, you know, Mahayana, we learn to play the instrument with a group, which means we're not only playing our instrument, we're aware of everybody around us in the Sangha, of what they're doing, what they're playing, what instrument they're on, what signature they're playing on. And so we've got more theory and it's great. You know, maybe we move on to Bodhidharma and we move on to, you know, of the three realms, nothing happens, which is outside the mind. And so we keep, we keep building on that theory. And as a Sangha, as a group, as, as folks supporting each other in our journey, we learn to play together because we're all practicing our individual scales and we're all tuning our own instruments, but we learn to bring that together, codependent arising, supporting each other, supporting the practice, sharing the practice, saying, hey, brother, I, I noticed you're down tuned a little bit there. Can we just tweak that string up a little bit? And then if we get really good, you know, maybe we get into a little jazz, maybe we get into a little improv and well, is this reality, isn't it? And we, and we still, we, we follow along because even though in jazz, everybody's playing a solo, they're all playing a solo together, which is the fascinating thing. Because everybody's playing the solo, like Bodhidharma said, it's, it's not outside your mind. Buddha is not outside your mind. But we're playing that solo together. We're, we're backing each other. We're playing off of each other. I drop back a little bit and let you have your lead. And then you drop and let the drummer kick in. And that's the way it works. But it all starts with the basics, the fundamentals. If you haven't figured out how to run a scale and how to tune your instrument and how to make that aperture and, and make the horn do something but squeak and spit, then then you're not ready for solos and jazz and groups. It's, it's time to sit down, go to the music teacher, you know, pick up a tab book, they used to call it, figure out some notes, and then we can work on the big stuff. And that way we all come up together, and that way we figure out how to play jazz, and we figure out how to back each other solo, and we enlighten all beings.